So a big hand, please, for Thomas Elmqvist, the professor at Stockholm Resilience Center, who's going to talk about uh, how smart really are smart cities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. And uh, I'm so happy to be here and, and sitting in this morning listening to all the creative people and the creative ideas. And I really think what it sort of represents is something I, I believe in deeply, and that is framed creativity. They actually, you create a fra frame, but then you ask people to just think out of the box within that frame. And I think it's a very productive way of, of putting new ideas, uh, this cross-fertilization of, of people with, coming from very different backgrounds. So hopefully, um, I will also... Uh, help contribute a little bit to, the, to that framing and, and, and with this question, how smart is a smart city? So after listening to all these fantastic things happening in cities and the ideas on what could happen, maybe we, it's good to, to just make a short pause and, and take a time of reflection on what does a smart city mean and, and what are these other concepts that actually mean. And I think there is a, <clears throat> a deep issue here that we all could have very good intentions, but those good intentions where we implement them could have unintended consequences. So we need to think a lot before we sort of roll out big ideas and big projects, uh, because we live in a very complex world where these unintended consequences uh, might happen. So the smart city concept <clears throat> has been around for um, decades, and um, there are these fantastic innovations uh, being developed. And, and nowadays, when people <clears throat> talk about waste, they often view it as it's a result of very poor design. I mean, waste is basically something you should reduce to zero. It's a resource to be used in, in other types of production. Uh, same with transport. Lots of innovative ideas in the smart city concept on, on transport, and we heard some examples today. Uh, energy as well. Um, and I think there are some concepts here uh, that are guiding this. One is the local self-sufficiency. And I think we should <clears throat> take a moment and reflect on, on uh, that concept of local self-sufficiency. And also this other concept, which is very engraved in, in the smart city, efficiency. Um, so is the smart city a sustainable city? Uh, I would say no, and the reason I say that is that uh, we tend to uh, develop the smart city concept in, in a too much of a narrow local uh, context, because we all know in the globalized world, every city is connected <clears throat> to multiple places around the world, have impact on ecosystems on distant places, and we need to take these teleconnections into account. Otherwise, <clears throat> you end up in a situation where you build sustainable sustainability in your place, but eroding it somewhere else. And I think there is one fundamental thing here, that sustainability is an attribute of a system, not of a location. And we need to take that on board, <clears throat> because if you look around, you will see these fantastic initiatives on building sustainability in almost every city we heard fantastic stories from uh, San Jose and from other cities in California. But I think <clears throat> we need to look beyond the location and put this, the system in focus. And the, <clears throat> the reason is this, that we now moved from a very village-like world uh, 100, 200 years ago, um, where there was a direct impact, where resources were extracted from, from a local area and the waste was... Uh, deposited also in a local area, so the, the impacts and the feedback was quite uh, direct and not, not very complex. However, in, in, in the globalized world, uh, we have multiple connections with many, many distant uh, areas, and we extract resources from all over the globe. We export waste <clears throat> and impacts also to many other places. And this also results in that we have these really complex feedback mechanisms that are obscure. And I think here is the first challenge. <clears throat> we need to understand these better, perhaps simplify them, uh, try to model these connections and feedback mechanisms uh, to be able to understand how a change in behavior uh, in, a, in one particular city would actually affect 
uh, other parts of the world. And <clears throat> to avoid this of unintended consequences. So related to this is that we, we have a fair bit of understanding of the dynamics of the local city. And also I would say on the global scale that we understand more and more <clears throat> about the global dynamics, uh, the climate system for example. But in between we have these network of cities where we have very uh, poor understanding how things going on on a local place will play out in this network and in turn affect the global and how global changes will affect the network which in turn would, would influence the local. So this, um, this middle level is still poorly analyzed, poorly known, poorly described and this is I think the second challenge we have to try to find ways of how can we gather data, <clears throat> how can we visualize these data in a meaningful way to understand these linkages. <laughs> now we'll turn to efficiency, uh, <clears throat> which is also a concept uh, within sustainability we, which we all believe in is a very good and important part of the development. But I think it's, again, it's important to make some reflections around the concept of efficiency. And one is that if, if you look at the uh, complex system, take an ecological system and try to describe it uh, from a complex systems perspective, you often come up with um, a description that this system has a high degree of redundancy. There are lots of connections <clears throat> you could remove without apparently very much happening to the system. And what we are doing when we drive and develop efficiency in our design system is actually to remove a lot of that redundancy. That's our sort of, <clears throat> that's a consequence of developing efficiency. Um, but more and more empirical data, modeling and experiments show that this has a cost that you're actually then also reducing the robustness of the system. And I think this is a, really a key thing when developing the concept around smart city, that we try to re rethink efficiency in, in terms of how much could we actually drive efficiency without losing this robustness. Related to this, uh, and this is theory coming out of ecology, is the theory on, on modularity. So on here, <clears throat> you have an example. This could be, ha the red dots could be habitat. Uh, you have an area with high modularity and low connectivity. So these would be patches very isolated from each other. <clears throat> these groups of patches could be highly uh, connected locally. On the other end, you would have systems with low modularity. These are areas with high connectivity. You have over dispersed distribution and highly, highly connected. <clears throat> so what ecology uh, uh, shows us is that there's something in between here and where lots of studies actually show that the intermediate modularity has a lot of advantages when it comes to robustness. That this intermediate modularity <clears throat> would reduce uh, the spread of a disturbance, the spread of a disease and moving from the very isolated to a more intermediate, you, you would uh, also reduce uh, the risk of local extinctions and too much of isolation. And I think this idea on intermediate modularity also needs to be introduced in, in the design of, of the urban area. And looking ahead, I think there are so many uh, opportunities we have. This, figure here shows that in 2030, if we look at 2030 uh, and all the urban land um, that has been built by 2030, 60% has yet to be constructed. This represents enormous investments ahead of us, mostly in, in Asia and also in Africa, uh, that re I think represent fantastic opportunities. 15 years from now, <clears throat> there is a window of opportunity to actually inter intervene in urban development, bringing in ideas that would actually change the trajectory of development for the whole planet. And 
there are lots of ideas being presented today that will fit into this greening of urban development <clears throat> for the next 15 years. But I also think that to make smart cities truly smart, we also need to think, how do we build in this idea of redundancy and intermediate modularity in this development so that we not lose the robustness, that we are not sort of driving efficiency to the way that we have become over-vulnerable? And how do we measure and account for urban teleconnections? And I think these two <clears throat> are challenges. And it would be fantastic to have a discussion today and tomorrow to see what are the ways we could gather information, data on these, and how could we use it, in, <clears throat> and how, what are the implications and applications of these ideas for urban development. So thank you very much.